Title of this video, Google Plus is not that bad, and an open letter to the children of the internet. I woke up and was doing my, checking my inbox, going over videos, and I came across some more Google Plus hate videos. Then it made me take a moment and step back because there was even a comment on one of my videos that their inbox was still buggy, they were still having problems with comments, and I'm asking myself, why am I not having these problems? I get an alert from Google Plus in my inbox because, you know, I have my emails forwarded to my main email account. I click on the link. I go to the comment. I reply to the comment and people reply back to me. I am not having the problems that other people are having. And it hit me. The number one reason is about two years ago, I made an effort to reply to as many comments as possible to my videos. I didn't like going to YouTube to go to the inbox to, so I had my Gmail account forwarded to my main email account. So anything that comes to the Gmail account, all notifications to Google Plus, whatever, comes straight to my inbox. I click and I'm able to respond. I created a system a long time ago to deal with these comments. And another thing, many people don't comment to the comments on their videos, especially the big YouTubers when it gets into the hundreds or thousands, they just don't. And there are many smaller YouTubers who only comment to one or two. And then there are people like myself who make an effort to try to comment and respond and, and, get in, and to create engagement with their subscribers. But a lot of people don't do that. They seriously don't do that. So. And then I was like, okay, so you create a system and the fact that a lot of people are having these problems means that they did not create a system because they were not handling a large amount of comments prior to Google+. Now, I'm going to tell you a story, and it's from my past, about a implementation that went awry. I used to work at a place called Scottish Rite. It no longer exists. It's Children's Healthcare um, of Atlanta. It's a children's hospital. We implemented this healthcare software system called Gerber Alley. I just checked in my uh, MacBook Pro. They're still in business. Let me tell you what happened. Switch from one system to another to the Gerber Alley. And we had six weeks of other madness. Let me paint the perspective for you. It's a children's healthcare hospital. There's Nick, you, there's an emergency room, there's ice, there's all kinds of critical, mission critical systems going on because you have babies, infants, preemies that were literally fitting the palm of my hand up there depending on the stuff that we did in the lab to be accurate, on point, and delivered correctly. Can you say stressful? We weren't the only one. This system was hospital-wide. It impacted respiratory therapy, occupational therapy, the lab. Remember, every part of the hospital switched to this new system. Can you say grumpy people? Can you say overworked people? Can you say double time, triple time? People were pulling doubles because you had to make sure the information was correct. If that meant printing it up, putting it in your hand and run it up to the floor to give it to the doctor, that's what happened. Because this stuff was literally life and death type stuff. I'm not bullshitting you. It was literally life and death type stuff. It had to be on point. So after going through that implementation, I'm going to compare and contrast that to Google+. Say you're a YouTuber. You wake up, oh, I got to join Google+, Plus to leave a comment. Didn't cost you any money. Maybe cost you a little time. You didn't really lose anything. It's not like you have to pull out your credit. You know, what I'm saying is, you're children. You are absolutely children. And when I watch some of these videos, I realize some of these people have never had real jobs. They've never had to support a family. They've never had to really go out there and work for five six, seven, eight, ten bucks an hour, and I'm talking about gut-breaking, back-breaking, sweat-inducing work to make a small buck. 
Yet some of the folks who are complaining the most are making thousands or more than thousands from sitting on their ass voicing an opinion. And they're pissed. That's why I say the children of the internet. Because if this is rocking your world, if you're making proclamations that Google is YouTube's over, let me give you some stats. There's one point, there's like 1,500 new videos uploaded to YouTube, I, I think, was it like every hour? Uh, it's, or maybe every day. It's, it's, it's huge. It's huge. Um, I think 1.5 million hours of content are loaded up a day. It's, it's huge. You think this is going to stop? Because now for you to upload your videos and have the ability to comment on YouTube, you must join Google Plus. Really? You think folks go like, I ain't going to do that and miss out on the silly ass videos or uploading bullshit their friends do or someone falling down? Or... YouTube is going to get bigger. YouTube's going to get better. And since it is still mostly free, and it looks like they're going to keep that way, it's like, hey, we have this crowdsourcing content. You, I, other people, we put content here up on YouTube, and other folks make money off of it. It's pimping. I recognize the game. But what's my saying? Don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. I'm not mad. I'm sitting here going... How can I make this work for me versus, oh, God, oh, God, YouTube, YouTube. Then again, I don't have any scared little bitch DNA. It's gone. If I had any, I'd gone. I uh, exhumed it, exercised it, whatever, because this is patently funny. This is crazy. And that's why I titled this an open letter to the children of YouTube. Because if this is rocking your world, I would really hate to see you act in the true crisis. Because in a matter of weeks, this is going to be over. A matter of days, really. And as for, let's talk about Google+. Plus. We don't like Google+. Plus. We like our Facebook. We like our Instagram. We like our, every time one of these, we like our Twitter. Every time one of these platforms does something that tries to generate money people like lose their freaking minds now part of that is the platforms gave you that promise so they created and this is a lesson for my hustle university students they created this expectation that it would always be this way and many really smart people have figured out that if we do it over a period of time and then we flip the game or you know as uh, Buster Rhyme used to say it flip mode we can get away with it and not really have too much to, to uh, lose too many people and get away with it. And I'll start, you know, with Google Plus, it's like, it's failed. Really? How did it fail? Exactly, how did it fail? One of the problems with the internet, and this is something I deal with people, is microwave expectations. You have to really understand that Google is sitting on more cash than a lot of countries. They can take however long they want to make Google Plus work. And instead of saying, hey, this thing didn't work out, we're going to scrap it and do something else. It's like, hey, you know, well, let's just link the comments. And also, let's talk about that because people are saying, hey, that's uh, BS on the other thing with the comments. As a YouTuber with a tan... I get a lot of stuff that's said to me, left in comments, that shouldn't be said. And it's always by that anonymous, nameless, faceless perpetrator. I guarantee you, when people have to start using their real names and being who they really are, a lot of that crap will stop. And let's talk about using your real name. There are some people that's like, oh God, I've got to use my real name. <laughs> God, in the name of sweet Jesus, I don't want to use my real name. People might know who I am when I say all of this bullshit. I went into a forum and lost my mind. And I used it in my real name. Comments are still there. You can Google the shit. And the thing is, when you are being 
the real you, not the internet you, not Sasha Gray or Bimby or Ted or Biff or whoever the fuck you want to be when you get online. You will govern yourself accordingly. And a lot of people seem to have a problem with that. They're just like, oh. And then let's talk about the cataloging information. Do you know what Google's mission statement is? To index the world. They have not hit, uh, hit that. I mean, that, that's core mission to index the world. They've been working on this since day one. And you use Google. Every time you use Google, the search engine, that information is kept. Every time you use Google Voice, every time you use any Google application, that information is kept archived for data purposes for the future. And let's talk about the matrix. You have a social security number. You have a job. You work. You live in the city. You live in the town. You went to public school. You're in the system. There's more information in the system than, about you than you could ever imagine. I'm going to tell you. There's the three main credit bureaus. There's another one many of you don't even know about. You've heard of Nexus, Lexus. There's, a, there's another, there's this master file of everyone about your life, where you went to school, what you did, police records. How many times? There's a master file on every United States citizen. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't even know that, and it's like, you feel that because you're not on Google or you don't, that no one's going to, most internet, well, most credit card fraud or identity fraud happens offline, not online. Most of it happens offline, like digging through your trash or just listening to you talk too loud in the restaurant. Most of it happens offline. So this whole thing about these, the erosion of personal privacy you cannot be a citizen in this you world that we have and have these robust expectations of privacy online. You can expect that when you go into your house and you shut the door and what goes on behind closed doors is private, you can expect that. You can expect that if you work for an organization that is not of the public sector, that a lot of information will be kept private. But anytime that you use the internet or put stuff out, your expectations for privacy are gone. Gone. And a lot of people, for some reason, don't seem to understand that concept. You initiate that stuff. So if you don't, if you want your privacy, you are uber privacy hound. Don't be on the internet. Don't get a mobile phone. <laughs> don't have a job. Be like that guy that lived up in the hills who made his own spoons. Be that person. Because if you are over the age of 21, shit, 12, you're in the system. And then a lot of information about you, your family, everything. Just go to a lot of search engines online, which are free, and you can get an amazing amount of information about that average person. Just how it is. And a lot of it happened when you got your phone number. With Bell South, AT and T, that created a huge database right there. So, with this whole thing with Google Plus, now getting back on that, because this is where I expect Google Plus to be going, because Facebook didn't have a YouTube to pimp. Facebook bought Instagram because they didn't want Instagram to overshadow them or someone else to buy Instagram, namely Google. They bought it as a preemptive move. One part of their business plan. It was a preemptive move. Because understand, what's the biggest search engine in the world? Google. What's the second largest search engine in the world? YouTube. One and two. Think about that. Think about that. And then Facebook has another problem. And the name is Amazon. Amazon's a technology company. So you've got, then there's Apple. There's a lot of stuff that's going on with big, well-funded, extremely smart companies. Google Plus, at some point, is going to be on par for the business community, more so than Facebook, because Facebook is really interesting right now. They're going through a lot of iterations with Facebook advertising, but for the business community, for other people, Google Plus is going to be awesome it's going to be awesome will it ever be a facebook it may be something better because you have google google plus google hangouts facebook has none of that 
Hangouts are in their infancy. Facebook has none of that. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm like, you know, Google Plus, they're linking all of that stuff there. And when they get it figured out, and they will, it's going to be awesome. I haven't done Hangouts because I've been waiting for these things to happen. Because Hangouts really don't suit me. But now there's a new reason I have to evaluate my business plan. Let's go back and like, okay. Because I don't just do stuff to do stuff. There's a plan, there's a methodology, there's a rhyme. Many of you just do shit to do shit, and when it goes sideways, you're like, Psh, slap the cat and kick my mama. There's something wrong. Oh, God, you know, the sky is falling. People, this ain't that big of a deal. I'm doing this video, one, to get some hate, because I know I'm going to get some hate, and I'm going to get more views, because I'm of the title of the SEO, because it's not that serious. But for those of you who are really paying attention, like I mentioned earlier for my Hustle U, uh, Hustle University students, understand this whole freedom, you know, giving stuff away for free, this is the backlash. Because of the old adage, luxuries once tasted become necessities. It's a simple psychological paradox. You tell people this is free and admit, and then they, they will claim onto it. And this is something I learned in sales. Never give out numbers because if you got three numbers, their mind will assign the most value to the smallest number. So what you're saying, I'm going to get all of this for 500 bucks. Now, I've said 750 and I said 1000 but they go back to that 500 bucks or try to shoehorn their expectations and as much value as in that 500 bucks because they like that smaller number. So understand, they started this thing and they're kind of like, you know, prying your fingers off of it because it's coming. Google is too smart. And the thing is, they have people who do analytics. Like, okay, we make this big, grand, sweeping change. How many people is it going to piss off? Facebook has become the master of this. Because, you know, every time, you know, just a few years ago, Facebook would do something. People like, we want our old Facebook back. Shit don't work no more. Facebook does what Facebook wants to do. And it's like, oh, God. And many of the people who used to complain the loudest and sign all of those silly petitions are still on Facebook and using it every day. Same thing with YouTube. Because, once again... Google, YouTube, Google Plus, Google Air, all of this stuff is interlaced into a nice suite. If you're an internet marketer or a Facebook person, I mean, you're trying to make money online, you can't ignore this. I don't care if it's just you have a blog. You can't ignore this. <clears throat> it's going to get to the point that you're going to need to do this for your eBay. You're going to need to do this for your Amazon. You're going to have to do this stuff because it's called marketing. So if you're just someone that likes to jack off and watch rabbit screwed, okay, yeah, this is too much reading. Yeah, you probably won't use it that much. But if you're an internet marketer, you're a person trying to make money, and once again, with the disruptive economy, if you are not paying attention to the stuff and going, like, I don't want to do it because it's too much work. <sighs> when you are sitting in your trailer 10 years from now eating pork and beans and bacon bits, Remember this video, because you've got a choice to change all that right now. All right, this is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you on the good side. Go ahead, hate the video, leave your commentary. I'm looking forward to it. Please do, because this stuff is fun to me. See you in the next video.